The mother left the one-year-old alone with the dog for a few seconds. She was frozen and stunned when she entered the room. Although they had only had the dog for a few days. She was sure that he had a gentle nature. And would pose no danger to her family. But then it happened. Her back was only to him for a few seconds. She was just about to rush to her child's aid. But then she noticed something that made her think. And when she realized what was really going on. She couldn't believe it. It all started when Catherine and. Her husband gave birth to their daughter, Charlotte. After a few months. The family of three decided to expand the family. But instead of having another baby. They figured it would be good for Charlotte to have a furry friend. He would give her safety and security. And later teach her a sense of responsibility. But they didn't want just any dog. The couple considered buying a puppy from a breeder. So they would have a dog with exactly the qualities. They needed for their family. At the same time. However, she also wanted to give a dog a nice home. That didn't have one yet. As fate would have it. They soon found out about a rescue dog. That originally came from a breeder. The only problem was that his breed had a reputation for. Being aggressive and unpredictable. The dog was an adult male Doberman Pinscher. Dogs of this breed were originally bred to be personal guard animals. So they are genetically predisposed to be particularly protective. And show aggression. Therefore. It is not surprising that many Dobermans are used as guard or police dogs. Their reputation reflects these traits. Although modern breeders have bred them to be gentler and friendlier. But there was something special about the dog Catherine encountered. This Doberman came from a reputable kennel called Carrie Kinder in Atherton. Australia. The breeder sold the dog to a customer but. Later found out he had been mistreated and rescued him. His condition was terrible. He was starved and had broken ribs. Suggesting he had been beaten. In fact, it was so bad that the vets considered putting him to sleep. But then Catherine came into play. Catherine's husband had some reservations. Had they chosen the right dog for the family? And had they really thought everything through? He didn't want the excitement of. Having a new family member to cloud their judgment. But his concerns were quickly swept away as he let the anticipation of their getting a dog catch the spirit. Even after learning about his tumultuous past, Catherine couldn't help but fall in love with this dog as soon as she met him. He had a personality that made her feel comfortable. And so, despite all warnings, she adopted him and named him Khan. She couldn't wait to take him home and meet her 17-month-old daughter. But that didn't mean. She would be reckless with a strange new dog in her house. She decided to take every precaution. For the first few days that Khan was at Catherine's house. Neither she nor her husband took their eyes off him. Baby Charlotte was fascinated by her new furry brother. And he seemed to be well behaved around her. He was always calm and gentle. Catherine thought to herself that she had made the right decision. Although she remained cautious when the dog and the baby met. But then, one day, her whole perspective changed. Catherine left Khan to play in the garden with her daughter. While she washed the dishes in the kitchen. As if sensing something was wrong. She glanced out the kitchen door and saw a sight she will never forget. But before she could do anything about it. It was already too late. Khan kept nudging Charlotte and squeezing her with his muzzle. Something Catherine had never seen at him. He pushed the baby back and forth as if trying to get her to react. Charlotte was clueless and kept rolling around. Then he clutched her diaper in his teeth. Catherine yelled Khan's name as she watched in horror. Catherine's thoughts raced in her head. She'd heard of dogs snapping. But could that have happened to Khan? She couldn't shake the feeling that it was all her fault. She should have been more careful. She shouldn't have let Charlotte go outside alone. Then Khan did something that. Almost made her heart jump out of her chest. 
Con grabbed Charlotte by her diaper and threw her about ten feet across the yard like she was a rag doll. Catherine couldn't believe what she was seeing. And for a moment she was frozen. Not knowing what to do. She had only one thing in mind, she had to rush to the aid of her child. Catherine ran to her daughter and hurriedly picked her up. She examined her until she was sure she was unharmed. She was surprised to see that the child only had a few scratches. As she turned to Khan, she almost expected him to attack her as well. But instead, the dog did something strange. Khan struggled to stand on his feet. He was panting heavily and salivating. He raised his front paw as if in pain. Then his breathing became heavier and he collapsed. Khan's condition worsened right before her eyes. Something else was clearly going on here. Catherine couldn't understand what had happened. Panicked, she looked in all directions. She felt helpless and overwhelmed with the situation. Then she saw that lying in the grass was a taipan. One of Australia's most venomous snakes. One bite from this snake is enough to end an adult's life. Only now did Catherine realize what was going on. Khan had flung Charlotte away from danger and sacrificed himself. But did he pay for this heroic deed with his life? Catherine realized that. Khan must have been bitten trying to protect little Charlotte. Knowing the dangers of Australian wildlife. Catherine knew it was a race against time. Khan had to rush to the vet and get an antidote because otherwise. He had little chance of survival. There was only one problem. Catherine was home alone with Charlotte and a 100-pound dog. But she didn't want to let him die after he saved her baby's life. With all her strength. She picked up the injured dog and somehow put him in the trunk of her car. Now if you asked me to carry his weight. I don't think I could do it, the woman later said in an interview. The adrenaline coursing through her body. Made her capable of unusual actions. It resulted in her being able to exert significantly more force than she could normally. The woman then raced to the vet with the dog in the trunk, barely paying attention to the traffic rules on the way. I didn't even stop at a red light, she later admitted in an interview. Catherine made it to the vet, who immediately took Khan in and gave him an injection of an antidote. Although Catherine was keen to know how her dog was, the vet told her they would have to wait until the next morning to see if the antidote had worked. She reluctantly went home, not knowing what the outcome would be. A bite from a taipan is usually fatal. But maybe Khan didn't get the full dose of poison and survived the night thanks to his size and weight. One expert thought he might have survived because the snake couldn't inject all of its venom into his paw. But he didn't want to give Catherine and her husband particularly high hopes. Either way, Catherine prayed all night that Khan would survive. She didn't close her eyes and worried until the next morning. The following day she received a call from the vet. The young woman cried. Khan was in stable condition and returned later that evening to return home. The little family couldn't believe their luck, friendship is a concept that is independent of gender, species or status. It is not dependent on circumstances. It is unconditional. Friendship is either sincere or false. It cannot be bought with any money. It can only be earned through loyalty, patience and love. It is a special gift from fate. It needs to be treated with tenderness and special care. This story took place in a Russian village where the Levitsky family has always had many animals. When this story took place, there were two cows, a bull, eight pigs and rabbits on the farm. But then they added another member as a calf was born. The calf was very cute. It had big eyes like melted chocolate and it looked at this new world with curiosity and interest. The calf was resting beside its mother while Irina, the owner of the farm, was cleaning the barn and her eight-year-old daughter, Nasia, was beside her mother. She looked happily at the calf, 
which she envied very much. Her mother could not stand such a scene and she asked the cub not to depend too much on its mother. Because the family planned to sell the calf when it grew a little older. Her family also had a dog. Who was just a very small puppy at the time. And Nasia begged her parents to take him in and raise him. If it had been roaming the streets. It would have frozen to death. Now it has grown into a big dog. And it is infinitely loyal to its family. The cheerful and curious Saudi is immediately interested in what's new on the farm and seeing the calf. It starts sniffing the newcomer in an attempt to get to know it better. Ignoring her mother's warnings, Nasia continues to stroke the calf's head and she even gives it the name Bondic. A few days later, the calf has tried to walk out and it spends a lot of time in the green grass. Its first steps are very cautious and uncertain. But the more it walks the more confident it becomes. Its legs are getting stronger and it is happy to play with Nasia. And Shandi in the yard. These three creatures spend all day together. And as soon as the girl sits down. The calf immediately appears to settle down next to her. And rests its head on her lap. When her parents decided on a specific date to sell the calf. Nasia was upset and cried, begging her mother to change her mind and then cancel the deal. But the woman was adamant. When that day came, Nasia was so sad that she had lost her soul. Just the thought that Bondic would be taken away and she would never see it again made the girl cry uncontrollably. Shandi did not understand what was happening. So it just followed the girl. When the buyers came, Nasia looked at them, hoping they might not like Bondic. But they did like the calf, and even said it was a good product. Hearing this, Nasia suddenly burst into tears. Bondic was her friend. Not just some product for sale and an investment opportunity. The dog joined in Nasia's crying and began to howl. Its head held high. Everyone was confused. They didn't know what to do. The girl was crying. The dog was howling. And the calf looked at them with eyes full of sadness. As if it was about to start crying too. The buyers discussed and told the Levitskys that if they took the calf away. They would never be able to forgive themselves. Because the sight of the three friends would always follow them. The mother, who felt very uncomfortable in the situation kept apologizing and asked the buyers to understand that they didn't mean it. But the buyers were decent and kind people. So they just said goodbye and left. Bondic stayed on the farm and they spent all day playing together. While the girl's parents just looked at them and smiled. They almost made a mistake. They almost deprived their daughter of the wonderful feeling of true friendship and almost broke her confidence in people. Because Bondic spent so much time with people. This must have affected its behavior. This adorable animal began to behave differently from its relatives. It was more like a dog. Its favorite pastimes were ball games and long walks in the fields. It even treated the girl like a dog treated its owner and it was very loyal. On one of their walks. Nasia went a little farther than usual. She and her pets came to a river where it was wonderful. And the cool breeze swayed. In the lush grass. Shandi was busy catching nimble grasshoppers and chasing butterflies. Bondic lay dozing in the grass. And the girl was weaving a wreath of daisies and cornucopias. Watching the clouds move quickly across the sky. The perfect day was interrupted by the sound of a group of boys walking by fooling around and making jokes along the way. They were delighted to see this unsuspecting girl. And they saw her as an object of their amusement. They picked up her straw hat and started throwing it over. And over to each other. Which forced the girl to run between them. This was fun for the boys. But Nasia could barely hold back her tears. Because it was the hat her mother had given her and she really liked it. That didn't stop the boys. 
who started making up obnoxious nicknames for the girl. But they couldn't have known that. The faithful dog had rushed to the girl's side. And Bondic had woken up and was getting up from the thick grass. It cocked his head in anger. And the calf, which had grown quite large, began to push the criminals with its strong head. This was a very unpleasant experience for the boys. While the dog caught the criminals by the pants, the boys did not expect the girl to have so many defenders and rushed to escape from the scene. The dog sent them away with a loud bark. When she got home the girl told her parents what had happened. And they were very worried. But at the same time they were happy. That their daughter had such loyal friends. Nasia shared the story online. When she was already an adult. Our next story is just as shocking. Born on Happy Highland Farm. The calf James suffered a brain injury at birth, which caused it to lose some reflexes, such as his inability to figure out how to suckle its mother's milk. Farmers Adam and Emily Hobbses decided not to give up and trying to care for it. They brought it inside and fed it with a bottle. The calf lived with the couple in the same room for several weeks. When the calf became stronger, they wanted to return it to the place where it was injured. But the cows in the Scottish Highlands did not welcome or accept it. Therefore, it continued to live in the yard. There it made friends with the dogs and it spent a lot of time with them. James was also starting to look like a big furry puppy. Because James had not been taught some instinctive tricks by cows and bulls. So it needed to be taught everything. The dog couldn't help but take on the task of teaching it. So James learned how to wag its tail try to chew everything it encountered, lick its owner's face, jump around happily, and invite them to play. The only problem was that James was not a dog. It was a cow, not even a calf. So after a few months it became too big for its dog friends. But there was no way they could put it back. Its behavior was too different for the cows to accept it as one of them. The Hobbses had to make a choice. They could leave the calf in the backyard. There, the big lovable animal would get in everyone's way, or send it to the slaughterhouse. Or figure out another way. So they ended up buying two orphan calves about its size. Which were perfect companions. Three abandoned calves that never really learned how to live in a herd. They quickly became friends and stuck together. They were sent to pasture and... The three friends continued to stay away from the rest of the creatures. But the other calves began to take an interest in them. Meanwhile, the farmers opened several social media accounts in James' name. Which quickly became very popular. I mean, who doesn't love a cute calf? And it's super nice in a suit. This is another topic of discussion. Seeing James on inns. People often asked if they could buy their pet. But Adam and Emily turned everyone down. Even though the offers they got were exorbitant. Because James is part of the family.